Welcome to Organizing Elephants on MLTV Mainline Network. This is Darla DeMauro, your host for Organizing Elephants, the show where we have sanity-saving organizing wisdom from smart, busy, accomplished women. And today we have a very special show. We are in the middle of the coronavirus uh, pandemic, and uh, I wanted to ask my friend Monique Sarkeesian to come on and help us with sanity saving tips for keeping our kids busy at home. Welcome, Monique. Thanks for being on. It's a great pleasure to be with you, always. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm sure the viewers have already noticed I am social distancing in my home office, and you are in your home as well. Yep. So we're. this is not usually how we tape the show, but uh, I'm grateful that MLTV Network was able to let us do this, and I see that you have a beautiful background there. We're we're on the Zoom platform. I think a lot of people know about Zoom that didn't know about yeah. it a couple of weeks ago. And uh, the background uh, I just want to start off with is actually one of your paintings, is it not? Yes, yes. Uh, somebody tipped me off to that in Zoom. You can customize your background, and because I was thinking about buying something on Amazon as a backdrop when then I realized that I can just upload a photo and I've got plenty of, yes, you know, yes. beautiful things to put behind me that I like better than what I can buy. <laughs> yeah, you have lots of beautiful art. That's what you do. That's what you create. And last yeah. time we had you on the show, we were talking about how you are a working artist. And yeah. um, that's one of the things I love about you. You've turned your love of art into an actual business. And you're still working, I know, during the pandemic, just like I am. Um, and you're creating art, and I'm seeing it online. You have also added something to what you have to offer right now, and that's these daily art lessons. So I wanted to start there and um, tell us about these daily art lessons. Where are they? How can people find them? And then let's talk about the other things that we can do to keep the kids busy and, and people in general. So these art lessons, tell me about them. Okay, sure. Um, well, God put it on my heart to um, give back to people as much as I could and help them with what I had in my hand, you know, what, what I can give for free. So every day I write a, um, based on my devotionals, um, I wait for a heaven download of what the lesson for the day is. And I publish a all ages art activity. It's just a lesson plan page where um, people can use whatever they have in their house and they could be two years old with supervision or they could be, you know, 102, you know, and um, it gives them an idea, something to think about and something to draw. And so it also is character based. So it has to do with what's going on in our hearts and dealing with um, emotions we might have right now, like about fear and where do, who do we look to, to help us when we're fearful, things like that. So there's a, a lot of a character building in there and they're faith oriented. So there's faith orientation in there and then bring it into a visual picture, which will also help change us from the inside out. So there's a lot of components to that. So every day I post that on my Instagram page, which is Monique Sarkeesian Art on Instagram. And then I also put them on both of my Facebook pages, which are um, the easiest one is Monique Sarkeesian uh, Fine Art Gallery. And then I, I made a sister page to that that just has those art lessons, but it starts off with my name. So you have to be able to spell my name. <laughs> and then, um, which I think is on the bottom of the screen or will be on the yeah. bottom of our screen so people don't have to stress about that right and um, and the other thing is then later in the day that, that I publish in the morning once I get all that together and um, then in the afternoons every day I do a, a live uh, painting demonstration where I'll t do a painting from start to finish. Usually it's a start to finish painting. Um, everyone's while there's one that's a couple of sessions long. So um, those are usually still life. And I decided to not get stressed about the fact that, you know, everybody's business has closed, you know, galleries are closed and things like that. I decided just to give and, and my, um, the people that are taking lessons from me can't come. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to give it, you know, 
yeah, I'm going to give it for free for the good of anybody across the world who, you know, can access it, be um, uplifted by it, learn something, be inspired at this time. You know, this is what I have to give. So that's actually me using my oil painting kit and in my tiny upstairs space and, um, and, you know, telling people what's going on in my brain and telling people how I mix my colors, you know, basically anything that I can help people with. That is, I think we're seeing so much more of that right now than we ever would have before a month ago. Uh, of course, there's always been a lot of content available online, but to be able to watch you, to watch a working professional artist actually create something from start to finish, um, no matter where you are in the world. I mean, um, Monique, I, you and I were on break just a minute ago, and in that break, I went and checked my email, and I actually had um, an email from somebody in Norway who had downloaded one of my books and um, is reading that in Norway. And I think the idea that somebody can be watching you uh, paint, you know, can be learning about you, can be learning from you, no matter where they are in the world, because we are all in this together. This pandemic is, it's called a pandemic because it's going across the world. And so the idea that we can be um, helping each other in the way that we know how which is our expertise, right? Your expertise is, is art. Um, it's just, it's just really uplifting, I think all the way around. And, you know, look, this, this pandemic, there's, it's serious. We want people to take the guidelines seriously. We want people to stay, stay home, stay healthy. Um, but we can also use the time to enjoy ourselves, to be kinder to ourselves than we normally are and to dabble, to learn something new, to, you know, to follow our favorites like you. And, uh, and I've watched some of these shows. I've, I've popped in and, and seen some of what you're doing. And it's really just beautiful. So um, talk to me a little bit more about how you think art in general can help people cope right now. Well, I'm an enormous believer in um, the value of art in bringing healing to people for uh, you know it's been invaluable to me throughout my life and definitely in times of trauma nowadays we're so used to typing on computers and it's very very handy and there's a lot less erasing that that goes on and things come out cleaner and more legible but um the act of taking a pencil and writing something has a permanence to it that makes a commitment on our part and there's something about like when you're making um setting goals for yourself that the act of writing those physically with a pencil as opposed to just you know typing in a computer that there's a psychological physiological difference to that there's a change that is more likely to occur that would be long lasting so that act of physicality of physically stating something i think has a lot to say and art is you know, all of the arts um, in the expression being in more, you know, right brained and heart centered, all that comes into play in processing art. And you don't have to have, um, you don't have to have major skills to express yourself in art. You don't have, all you have to have is to be able to be willing to have your hand move to what your, you know, your brain and your heart and your spirit are telling you. And that is all you really need. And sometimes I go to do things and it looks like, uh, not like anything. I was just like, I really need some help with this, you know, and other times you do something and it just comes out well. So it, there's really more about, um, the connection that goes on you can always erase things you can always change things you can always cut things out if they didn't turn out well you know and collage them you know there's lots of redemption that can happen in art so um but it, for releasing trauma releasing fears releasing feelings there's artists in all its forms are invaluable just like if you are more gifted in a um in a physical mode like people we were talking about running during our, our little break that I wasn't gifted with that gift but a lot of people I know enjoy uh, sports the act of running or the you know just some kind of physical activity gives them that same kind of physical release so I'm not saying that you can only exer exercise your heart in um, artistic ways but it is 
really beneficial. It's it's a God given way. Whether you're singing a song or making music or or um, or writing or enjoying someone else's writing, yeah. there's things that are allowed to move around in you rather than being stagnant. And I think that that's really what it comes down to. That's all such great advice. I I think a lot of people will be able to take something away from what you just said. Um, I want to move now into a little bit more of the tactical (laughs) because as you know, the government uh, governors, sorry, the governor of Pennsylvania just closed schools for the rest of this term. So my elementary kids, will not be going back to school this year. And so that means I get to be um, teacher, counselor, lunch lady, and art teacher as well. Um, So let's talk about what we can do um, to help our kids through art, even if we aren't ourselves talented in the artistic realms, even if we don't think of ourselves as a painter, you know, what can we do to keep our kids busy and, and help them? Well, luckily, children love art, you know, unless they've been wounded or somebody told them that they couldn't, you know, they weren't good at it, or unless they have put pressure on themselves, thinking they can't do do well at it. But usually younger children are all like, yeah, you know, and yeah. they can, they can use anything to make art. And, you know, even if you only have, if you have a pencil, a regular pencil and nothing else you can make art if you have um you know if it's if it's rained a lot recently you know if they go outside and they arrange you know rocks or plant flowers i mean and these are not art only activities mm-hmm. but i'm saying it to kind of just to think in different ways of creativity because creativity comes in so many ways like if you if you're physical abilities were limited and you couldn't do certain things that other people could do, what would you do to stay creative? You would, there would be, you would find ways, you know, whether you're arranging things, Mm -hmm. you know, um, or you're cooking and creating in that way. Um, I talk with my hands a lot. And, um, you're right uh, though. The, the act of being in control, even in a very, very small way, the act of organizing your junk drawer or the act of, I, I love what you just said about arranging rocks, you know, on a sidewalk that can, to an adult, that can look like creating a mess, but to a child um, or even to an adult, uh, that can look like, um, you know, creating some structure where there wasn't some before. And we know through so many studies that the perception of being in control is actually reality and that can make people healthier. So um, I love the idea of taking something very simple and just playing with it and, and seeing what you can create, being creative in a way that maybe you wouldn't have thought of before. Well, and now... If you have materials, you can make masks. We were also talking about, you know, now people are more in need of masks. There are no-sew ideas on the internet. And um, children could feel more in control of at least if I have to wear a mask. It doesn't have to be a scary mask. It can be a creative mask. It can, I can draw things on it that make me feel happy or that that reflects me um or it can be from a favorite soft t-shirt like you were saying uh you know yeah so something that you know they loved and it got holes in it you know could be or you know whatever um we're in interesting times where we can look around us and see what we have and what can we use and repurpose to bring joy you know so it's actually i for me this is i do this stuff all the time so i totally i'm having fun but i also you know i I appreciate the fact that there there are a lot of people in dire situations i'm not making light of that i'm just saying that there are ways to find joy in no matter what you're doing and to a child stacking little stones outside they might be making, you know, like little animal houses or something. Mm-hmm. I mean, you or have no entire idea. world. <laughs> entire worlds, exactly. Yeah. Um, my my neighborhood posted. I thought these were cute ideas. Um, 
the going on a bear hunt book, they asked all the neighbors to um, put teddy bears in their window so that when they walk their young children around um, to get them out of the house, that, you know, they could look for bears and go on a bear hunt. And I thought that was a cute idea. I read about that. The other thing I'm seeing is I'm not sure if it's a movement or where this is coming from, but I'm seeing a lot of rainbows and rainbows posted in windows. And so we actually yesterday spent about a half an hour, my uh, younger child, uh, she actually cut out hearts from just regular construction paper. And we happened to have enough that we had a rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And uh, we posted them in the top panes of our windows. And she actually posted the hearts in the top panes and the cutouts in, in below. And I think we have a picture of that we might be able to show too. So that was very simple. It took us about a half an hour, which is good for me. I needed to you know, have them spend about a half an hour doing something. And we, we all worked together on it, actually. That was fun. Uh, and you can see it, uh, you know, walking past our house. Um, I have another, I have something that I, I kind of want to, you know, have you weigh in on. We actually, sure. we have this, uh, we, it was a gift from Harry and David's. It came with fr um, dried fruit in it, actually. Right. And um, it came out of our pantry. We were cleaning our pantry, organizing the other day. And I thought, you know what, this little tray, I wonder what we can do with it. Um, do you want to, you know, point out some, some found objects like this that people might already have in their home that they could turn into something? Sure, sure. Well, what, do you have an idea for that yet? Um, I do, actually. My daughter, so we made a, a bunny, um, a piece of bunny art a little bit ago. We used a canvas that had something else on it. We painted over whatever was on it and we put a new bunny on it. Uh, just a uh, cut out from clip art off the internet. I wish I could credit whoever's bunny this was, but I don't know. And then we uh, hot glued some buttons around it. So this canvas, which is the same kind of thing that you get at painting with a twist, um, you know, you can turn that into something new. And so our idea was to put our bunny on here and paint over and so when you would pull something off, when you pull the bunny off, you'd have a brown bunny on, I think the, the idea is a purple tray is what we're going to end up with. But what would you do something with something like this? Well, that's a really nice tray. Um, I mean, that could be easily mounted on the wall by putting, you know, either there's a the hammer in I saw think, tooth, sawtooth yeah, hangers, saw 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 hangers or you know eye hooks and wire um but there's lots of things you could do it speaking of the rock idea you could do a little mosaic okay. which mosaics are pictures made of small pieces of other things whether they be tiles or glass or you know you could if you had some dishes that are already were chipped that you wanted to get rid of you could smash those with a hammer and glue those down and then put you know, some kind of grout in between them, or glue if you, you know, yeah. kid-friendly stuff. And how many uh, preteen and teenage boys are just itching to take a hammer to that china? <laughs> right? That I mean, that can be fun, you know, for that could be for somebody. Yeah, um, right. Just wear gloves to pick up the broken pieces, yeah, so you don't, absolutely. you know, be safe. Right? Um, or those mosaic pebbles, like you know, like the dollar stores had them a lot for using in flower arranging. Yeah. Those glass pebbles. Um, uh, and I'll tell you, as an organizer, I find those in everybody's, you know, linen closet with the old vases. They're always in the bottom of a vase. So, you know, you have these things. Marbles. That, yeah, you don't have to go to the dollar store. You don't have to order anything online. Yeah. These are things that you probably already have at home. Right. Well, okay. So ideas of other things people have at home, let's think. Like pots and pans that are no longer serviceable what else do we usually have a lot of usually have cardboard or boxes i'm a huge fan of cardboard toilet paper <laughs> rolls so anyone <laughs> yeah toilet paper rolls um yeah paper towel rolls what else do we have um cereal boxes you know i think cereal, cereal boxes, boxes is something people forget about if you you know cut along the side open it up it's a really nice canvas it's a big area that uh, you know a child could paint on or, or draw a sign yeah that's true um what else do people have uh, if you have a cigar box or you know the simple wooden boxes those are really fun um 
pipe cleaners. I'm trying to think yeah. what, but more commonly, like what else would people have in their house? You know what? There's, I'm, I'm glad you said pipe cleaners because there's all sorts of wire alternatives when people are like, Oh, good. I don't have a pipe cleaner. Um, garden wire is, uh, if you have any garden wire, I know that, um, that's, that's easily found in a lot of garages. Um, but also bread ties. A lot right. of people save those those wires that come off of bread bags, and um, uh, they also come off the back of toys a lot of times, and they're t they're longer than right. the bread ties because they're holding the toy into a cardboard box. So I tend to save those. I know some people have them at home. Um, w hangers, wire hangers, those can be cut and refashioned, or you can make a, a wreath out of those as well. Um, magazines, what do you think about magazines? Or do you have any ideas for, you know, cutting and reusing those? Yeah, well, magazines are great for collage. Actually, you're bringing to my mind, um, I have some friends that have been doing book arts where you, they take books that are no longer read or were given to them or something. And I'm sure you can find, um, you know, YouTube's for, and they fold the pages in different directions. And so when they're done doing every page in these books, they have these sculptural forms. Yes. They're actually really interesting. And that's something you don't need scissors. I mean, you could cut them if you wanted to, but it's all folding in a different direction. The oh, book I can love that apart. idea. Yeah, and they're 3D. So it's yes. that's actually really fun. That would take a child a long time to do, mm -hmm. and you would not have to worry about safety. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that's really great because a lot of people are decluttering right now. And actually, I worked with a client this morning, uh, virtually, of course, and his project was that he was he was trying to declutter his bookshelves and get rid of some books. And we talked about, you know, what are you going to do with your with your things as you're decluttering? Well, you can't drop them at a donation center. Please don't try. It's not only dangerous, but illegal. And uh, you want to be staying home. You don't want to be dropping your stuff off right now. So try and reuse it in an, in an art project. I love that. Monique, we have just a couple of minutes left. So um, I want to ask you really quickly, can people still go outside in this pandemic and uh, do anything with art? Or, you know, are we literally shut in our house? What's your take on that? Um, I don't, I'm more of an introvert, so I don't mind being inside that much. And, you know, cause I can paint, <laughs> which is my favorite thing. Um, but I, a lot of my neighbors are out walking around and, you know, searching for things, doing scavenger hunts for things. Um, there was also a challenge in my neighborhood to do the sidewalk chalk drawings. Oh, you love know. that. Yes. They were like, oh, it's going to rain the next couple of days. Today's a sunny day. Everybody go out and do sidewalk art. You know, so I I thought that was a great idea. Um, so that's something that people can do. I mean, there's definitely uh, the Philadelphia Museum of Art and the Barnes Foundation, which are both local to where we live, um, are posting all the time uh, virtual exhibits or showing off their exhibits that are going on a lot of me and a lot of my artist friends are all posting things all the time uh, with things that we're doing, you know, are we're working on things we want to feature, things we want to talk about, and you get to hear a lot of what's going on in our brains, which we usually don't uh, get the chance to I talk love that. about that much. So oh, wonderful. An, so an exhibit. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. An exhibit I'm in in um, Swarthmore Gallery on Park. She said, well, since the gallery is closed, I'm going to do a 10 minute video showing your artwork here and you can send me a voiceover. And she, you know, spliced it together and um, and sent that out to people. You can find that on Vimeo. So there's a lot of virtual exhibits that people can see without leaving the house. That is great. And I, I appreciate you sharing that because I wanted to let people know just once again where they can find you, where they can find these online daily art lessons that you're putting out. That's at MoniqueSarkeesianArt.com, right? Well, that's where that's my main website where they can find the lessons is on my Facebook page and Instagram page. So if you go to my Facebook page, that's Monique Sarkeesian Fine Art Gallery, um, you'll see them all on there. And that's where I do my Facebook live sessions. And if you don't catch it live, you can watch the recording later. So this is day 24. So aside from last Sunday, when I took a day of rest, and I'll take a day of rest this Sunday, there's 23 other videos.
is Twitch. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> And I think like me, um, you know, I am encouraging people who are trying to find things online. Uh, if they're not sure where I'm putting them, I'm encouraging people to get a hold of me. And I think you're the same way, Monique, right? So if somebody isn't sure where those Facebook lessons are, they can probably just email you. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. Monique, thank you so much for being on today. I appreciate it. Um, I hope that you stay safe, stay home, stay creative, and we will talk soon. And for all my viewers here on Organizing Elephants, I wish the same for you. I hope that you've been inspired by, uh, you know, two women who are still working even during the <laughs> pandemic. And I hope that you are kind to yourself. I hope that you, um, really find something to inspire you in the situation that we're in. And if we have inspired you, please leave a comment, get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much from all of us here at MLTV Mainline Network. Thank you. Mm -hmm.